it really sucks because there are just days where you don't feel like doing anything. You don't feel like cleaning, you don't feel like cooking. But for a lot of us, we just don't have the luxury of time. Of course, take breaks and take as many breaks as you need, but there comes a point where there are real life consequences for putting too many things aside for too long. You don't want to study today? That's okay. But we can't just sit here and not study for the entire semester then fail and drop out of school. Consequences, you know? So in this video, besties, I'll be discussing how I study when I'm struggling with my mental health. First, try not to compare yourself to when you were fine. I used to always tell myself, oh, I'm such a failure because last time I could do three lectures in one day and now I can only do one. Or last time I could wake up at 4 a.m. and now I only wake up at 3 p.m. On a good day. <laughs> if you have these thoughts as well, I want you to remind yourself of this. Don't compare yourself to the person that you want to be or once were and start working with what you have. You can't understand concepts as fast as you once could, that's okay. Allocate double the time you would once take to study a topic. You get distracted all the time while studying? Okay, let's figure out how long we can focus for, start with that, then slowly extend our study sessions as we get better. I have a whole playlist for all my academic videos and study tips that you can check out here after watching this video. All that matters is that we are making progress, as small as that progress may be. If you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to subscribe and leave a like. Thank you! Next, when you're making a to-do list, ask yourself these questions. Write it all down, organize your thoughts. And then to prioritize, you ask yourself these two questions. Do I really need to do this? If yes, do I really need to do it right now? A lot of the time when we're studying, we get really stressed because we feel like we're not studying enough or we're not covering everything. Do you really need to memorize every single thing in the textbook? If you said yes, is it because every single thing will be tested or you're just paranoid? Do you need to finish this assignment? Yes, of course you do. But do you need to finish it right now? No. If you're in school, you can always email or ask your teacher for an extension. If you're in university, if you submit late, you will lose one mark or a few marks depending on how late you are. It's better to rest today, complete your assignment properly tomorrow, and submit late because losing a few marks due to late submission is much better than rushing than losing 10 marks over it. Asking myself these two questions really helped me a lot with stress management and anxiety. Also, I know that when you're stressed, every single little thing can feel like an overwhelming task and you can't start to clear your mind if your space isn't organized. So your space as a student is your laptop and I use identity to organize mine. I've been using them for months. You can use identity to organize all the websites that you use into different folders, which makes everything super clean and neat and easy to navigate because they're all in one space. Just fill in the details of your most used websites, pick a folder you want it to go to, or drag and drop to create a new folder. You can have all your school emails, Google Classrooms, Notion page, or Zoom links all in one spot. No more messy, overwhelming laptops. I create separate folders for different parts of my life so you can link the PDF version of your textbook in your chemistry folder or your favorite stores in your shopping folder. You can also create to-do lists at the side, set due dates, and link your websites for even more efficiency. Identity is completely free, so I'll just leave a link in the description box below and you can check it out if you're interested. Next, remove yourself from that situation. Okay, I'm gonna tell you and myself something right now. We all know this quote. Believe you can and you're halfway there. It works both ways, bestie. Your successes and your failures. Whenever I start to get overwhelmed with my work, I immediately try to leave that space or the negative thoughts will just consume me. If you're at school, just ask to go to the toilet. The gist of it is, you want to create a reflex that best suits you and your needs. And a lot of the time, the best way is to immediately remove yourself from the situation if you can. 
if I'm at the study area, I go upstairs or go to another room. Anxiety is fear of the future. So I found that the best way I calm myself down was to bring myself back to the present. One way is walking around and this is my absolute favorite. Walk around and tell yourself what you feel, use your senses. I see a pool table and a shelf filled with books. I wonder what books there are. Tell yourself what you can smell. I smell coffee. This works whether you are alone or in a crowded space. It's not so much about distracting ourselves, it's more about training ourselves to stop worrying so much about things that have not happened and focus on what is happening in the now. Also, it has to come to a point where we don't just panic when our anxiety suddenly spikes. We just tell ourselves, okay, I know what I need to do right now is to get out of that space. Whether that's just by putting on headphones and creating your own space or leaving that space physically for as long as you can because not everyone has the privilege of escaping the situation that's making them feel anxious. We're spending so much time and energy worrying about things that have not happened to the point where that thing that is worrying you or stressing you out might actually happen because believe you can and you're halfway there. Next, not now. An advertisement might play in the next few seconds, so if you want to support this channel, please do not skip the ads. Thank you. You don't have to do everything now. I had a pile of laundry that I just didn't feel like doing and it sat there for days. Same with university. I remember at one point, I took a lot of naps instead of studying because there was just too many things to do and I didn't feel like starting. So I complained to my mom about having so many clothes to wash and fold and she just said one thing, why do you have to do it all now? And I have no idea why but everything just clicked. We often stress ourselves out because we think, oh, we have to finish studying this topic today or we're unproductive. We have to complete everything on our to-do list or else we're a failure. And then after all that stress, then we get more anxious and the whole cycle repeats. Why are we so toxic to ourselves actually? <laughs> the thing is, we don't have to do everything now. Study a little bit of lecture 10 today, then the rest tomorrow. Do half of your homework today, then the rest in a few days. Didn't finish everything on your to-do list today? It's okay, continue it tomorrow. No one is holding a knife against your throat, forcing you to complete everything now. I also made it a habit to stop looking at incomplete tasks as something to worry about. Instead of telling myself, ah shit, I still have so much to do. I just say, okay, I've already done a lot or just a little bit, but that's still better than not doing anything at all. Then I look at which tasks take the least time to complete and start with those first. You want to try and complete and kick out all the annoying little tasks out of the way so that you don't clutter your brain with all these thoughts. Next, when you rest, rest. We like to beat ourselves up for resting. If you still feel tired after taking like 5 naps a day, it's probably because you aren't really resting. You spend those times worrying about things you have to do instead. So your breaks end up being self-sabotage sessions, but you're just lying down. <laughs> Go for a walk and just rest properly. Put on music or white noise if silence makes you overthink. Taking well-rested breaks is like you resetting your laptop when your laptop lags. If you don't reset it in time, it's gonna crash and you'll lose all your progress. Next, find your reset routine. A reset routine is a process that helps you relax or helps you prepare for your tasks ahead. Just do one little thing that makes you feel happy or calm. Here are some suggestions from you guys over on Instagram. Huh? Doing a skincare routine eating comfort food, watching TV or K-dramas, work. Go to my Insta and click on this post in the comment section to hear more suggestions from other people in the Faye Films family. One advice that I have for all of you out there is to find a routine that does not depend on others because not everyone can be there for you all the time. It's not because they don't want to be there for you, but Sometimes people just don't have even enough energy for themselves, so they just don't have the capacity to care for you as well. You know, it's not because they don't want to. Please remind yourself that. 
because sometimes people are going through things that we also don't know about. Also, I always see people online hating others for having an expensive reset routine like shopping or traveling. Dude, if you have the money and you like spending it, go ahead and spend it. Don't care what other people think. If you've made it this far, comment down below what do you usually get stressed about. Let's make this a safe space for everyone to rant or cry. I'm just so proud of you for trying because I understand how hard it is to want to get better and to start to get better so the fact that you even clicked on this video and tried I'm really so proud of you and I want you to know that thank you guys for 550,000 subscribers like over at Fae Films. I'm just speechless and I'm so grateful for every single one of you. I'm so proud of you guys. And I'll see you all in my next video. Follow my Instagram. Bye bye.